righty. So getting into our next match, we are going to have on stream here. We got Encina going up against Egos Megaplox. We all know Megaplox, one of the demons on this game. Extremely good Sophia. It looks like Sophia is going to be his last pick for his team. Got that Sia, the S17, and the Sophia all rocking the triple S's here. And then we got Encin or Encina uh, with the cookie can. Cupid and the Magician. I haven't seen much Magician um, be played in Bracket anymore, so I guess we're going to be seeing a little bit of that action right now. I don't know how good this character is anymore, but I'm sure he's still annoying. It looks like um, Encina is more of the zoner type guy, so we're going to see how good Megaplox is going to be able to get around these walls that this character's known, or all of these characters are known to throw out. All right, gets the up air, falling up air, gets that uh, the forward air after it. Oh, great up B timing from Encina right there. Was able to avoid that forward air. That would have put him in an extremely bad position. Cookie is very uh, floaty, so once you get him off stage, it's not necessarily too hard to edge guard him. And Megapox trying to go for that reverse, um, the reverse up B right there to try to get, try to clip Cookie and Can from making it to the ledge. Wasn't able to do so though, and now he's in a pretty bad spot. Hey, it looks like Encina definitely knows what he's got going on. All right, gets the down tilt into the up air. One more up air should be enough to do the job. Don't know if down tilt to up air is going to combo anymore, but Megaplox does have the full ultimate on deck. And honestly, he's pretty close to losing his life right now. I think he might as well just go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Just in case he does lose his life, it won't be for nothing. Okay, pulls the trigger on the down B, and that's going to be enough to take it anyways. And he does still have that ultimate on deck. Not going to be the super ultimate, but he does still have one in the back pocket. Oh, yeah, you got to be extremely careful when you're on edge against Cupid. Cupid has some of the best ledge trapping in the game and edge guarding simply from the clouds and the arrows. You don't want to be off stage when you're going, trying to make it back against those arrows because there's so many of them that drop from the clouds. And then you get the notes into the clouds. That's just, uh, hello? Whenever you put the notes or, or the, um, yeah, the notes into the cloud, it just makes a huge, big old blast. That's not something you want to be around, so... We're going to be seeing the Cupid versus the S17 matchup. I'm not really sure how much uh, Megapox has been practicing his S17, but, I mean, it's still S17. She's still a decent character. Obviously not as good as she was, but, I mean, that it was, it, I'm not complaining about it. Okay, he gets the nair into the back air. That would not have comboed, but he was able to get the um, he was able to get the jump the jump read after. So, Encina still in a pretty bad position right now, trying to find his way off of this ledge, but Megapox is not having it. And yeah, you can see Encina kind of stalling out with the Cupid over there, making sure he does not get hit by that Forge Smash from S17. Yep, and there it is. Caught the ledge jump. I don't know if he has a jump right now. He's going to be stalling out just a little bit, so he did have a jump. Going to be able to up B back the ledge, but he's still in a very bad position. Megaplox is not letting him get back to stage and touch ground. Okay, and that side B should be enough to do it, and yes, it will be only 18% on the side of Megaplox's S17, and now he's got to fight against this Magician, and we all know how annoying this character can be, especially when you're going for the timeouts. Megaplox kind of doing something smart right there. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention, but what he was trying to do was go ahead and get that down air, um... The down angled loaded up for the for so he could charge the ultimate. I don't know if it counted towards the hat or if it just has to be the statue. But either way, very smart play for Megaplox if that did work out in his favor. Oh my gosh, statue going against him. The anime betrayal. Not something you want to see if you're a fan for Encina. Yeah, and Cena's in a very bad position right now, trying to stall out on that statue out there. But Megaplox knows that if you... Oh, this should be huge. 
Only going to get the up air or up till into the up air. One more up air at that height will definitely be enough to do it. So Encina's got to be careful here. Does have the ultimate on deck. Didn't drop down far enough. So he's going to waste it essentially. And that up B is going to be able to punish. Now Megapox is going to be on his best character. We all know this man probably has one of the best Sophias in the game. I would say he has the best, but MJ plays him. And I mean, you know, Swagoo's now in the building. So... Fortunately, he's not going to be attending this tournament. He was, but he had some stuff come up, so it is what it is. We got Megaplox on the stage right now. And Cena, 122% on him, got 22% on Megaplox, and he does have that uh, the throws charged up. Don't want to be in a very bad position against Magician because, uh, I mean, making it back to stage can sometimes be hard, but that's definitely something that Megaplox could have had a better punish on. Could have went for the neutral B right there, but instead goes for an up tilt. Um, That bracket's wrong. I need to change it. That's on me. Oh, tries to get the hit, and you can see Encina's making this comeback right now. Megaplox is kind of slowing down his gameplay because he's been running in a lot, and he's been getting destroyed on this last stock for his Sophia. So, I mean, if I'm Encina right now, I'm definitely playing as calm as I possibly can. You do have 25 seconds on the board. I'm not sure if either player is aware of that, but right now, that's going to be it. Getting the down tilt onto the golden statue, catching the ledge hang for Megaplox, and that's going to be Encina taking game number one in an excellent comeback fashion. Fiddlesticks. Okay, what's up, Flea? How you doing, homie? Oh, you were the one that asked. I couldn't see the names. I mean, I, could, I didn't read the name. Alrighty, Megaplox. I literally just looked over at the monitor. Meg Megaplox already has 51% racked onto him right now. The Sia was able to do a little bit of work. He did take a lot of percentage and wasn't really able to pull the trigger on the ultimate in, good, in a good way, but... I mean, right now, he's got this cookie and can juggling all the way up in the sky. He's going to be able to grab that ledge, but let's see if he's going to be able to make it back to stage and touch ground, get back to playing some neutral. Megapox is probably going to go for the runoff down B right here. No, does not do so. Instead, goes for the down tilt ledge trap. Not going to be able to get the connection on it, though. And then Cena just kind of holding shield, making sure that Megapox doesn't try to approach him. If you do, it could be a lot of damage on the board. Okay, going to jump back. Goes for a down tilt again. Megaplox is playing so safe on the stage right now. Kind of messing with him with the empty hops. That's still not going to be enough. Cookie and Ken is a very heavy character, believe it or not. Isn't one of the super heavy, so he doesn't get the rage factor. But, I mean, it is still kind of hard to take this character off that stage and take that stock off of him. Megaplox might go off stage for this one, or is he not? Nope, just going to stay on stage. Try to go for the ledge trap option. Oh, yeah. And Cena kind of just reading those empty hops out, knowing that Megaplox isn't going to throw out an unsafe move on his shield. Just kind of went under him, caught the jump with an up tilt. Um, I don't know if Mega... Well, obviously, he didn't know that he had his ultimate on deck. Was going to go try to throw a note right there with the neutral B, but unfortunately going to pull the trigger on the ult. So now he's got to charge that thing up one more time, and he's not going to have the super, super ultimate anytime soon because if he loses this stock, there will be no more Sia. Great parry on the homing missile. Cena knowing that he was going to run off. How do you know he's going to run off there? He hasn't done it once this entire set, and now he does it, and Encina was ready for it. These are signs of a very good player. Gets up with the ledge drop, uh, ledge drop jump into the forward air, and you can see Encina's ready for every option that Megaplox is doing, and now that could have been a back air right there or potentially even an F smash, but he wasn't ready for him to land on the stage. And look at both of these characters' percentages right now. They are glowing red. Encina almost at, a, at 200%. The dash attack still not going to be enough, and Megaplox is fishing for this stock and he's not going to be able to take it and Cena with an up B that's going to be able to punish the option that Megapox was going for which was the down B and now he's got to play this whole stock or he's got to take this cookie out with the S17 I'm sure that's not going to be too hard of a task but the way that Encina is playing commentators curse it was actually going to be a little bit harder but no the dash attack still going to be enough to take that first stock off of Encina and now it's going to be the Cupid versus the S17 matchup Okay, gets the neutral B into the side B. I'm pretty sure that was probably supposed to be a B reverse um, neutral B right there, but unfortunately got the side B. And now Encina kind of cooking up. Who let this Cupid cook? He's supposed to be shooting love arrows, not the fire ones. Okay, gets another uh, neutral B into, or yeah, neutral B into the dash attack. 
Now, once, once I will mention it again, Cupid is the lightest character in the game, and S17 has extremely strong kill power. So, and Cena, honestly, he could be sitting at kill percent right now. Potentially, if Mega Fox is able to get like a fully charged high on flame, high ion flame into like a dash attack or a back air or something like that, this could be it for Encina. But oh my God, what's he gonna do? I don't think Cupid's gonna make that back. Unfortunately, the SD and Mega Fox still gonna be able to live. That could have just threw the game right there for him. But we did know that Magician might be Encina's best character because the way he was able to make that comeback last game in that game number one, he might be able to do it in this game number two. Oh my God, I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but there's already a minute and 45 seconds on the clock. Now, with, with this game, I don't. they didn't make it seven minutes. They only made it six, so it is just a minute off. I believe they should probably try to update it to seven. You don't really see too many timeouts in this game, but with Magician on the screen, 96% of the time, you're probably gonna see one. But either way, Megaplox has got to take this stock off of this Magician if uh, if um he wants to get, in, get back into the set. Oh my God, how are you able to time that so perfectly? And Cena does have the potential to win this game, but he's gotta be careful. Now Megaplox is on his best character and that is not something you wanna be doing. But I don't know if Megaplox is playing right now. This might be his, his brother holding the controller because we don't normally see Megaplox miss out on these opportunities for these punishes like this. Let's see what he's gonna do here. He goes for the forward smash. He's gonna be able to get him off stage, but he is back to the ledge right now. And Megaplox kind of feeling himself. You, can, you know when Megaplox is doing all those wave dashes and those crazy movements with this Sophia, you know that this man is ready and hype. I don't know what Encina's doing. You got 40 seconds on the clock, my boy, and you are down in percentage. If you lose this game because of that, well, you didn't, but you, you would have lost because it's a percent, it's a game of percentage and stock. Once you get to that last stock, it's not about who's got the last stock and wins it in sudden death because that does not matter, and if it did, it'd be stupid, but... He's a new player. just started his own clan, too. Oh, okay. This guy would be so much better if he took the right color for his own Cupid. I didn't see which ones he have, which ones he has. I know he's using homing missile on Cookie, too. That I'm pretty concerned about because that really has never mattered. Like, look at that. What type of homing missile goes directly over the head and and, <laughs> and to the other, <laughs> other side of the opponent, bro? Like, it literally just went directly over him. I thought homing missile was going to be good because it kind of be like Samus side B, but it's not at all. Oh, almost gets the fair. That would have been it right there, but... Okay, gets the up tilt. Putting a little bit of extra percentage on Encina right now. Oh, Megaplex was trying to fall through that platform with the fair. Now he's getting hit by a lot of fairs of his own. I'm sure that was supposed to be the exact same thing. Alleged, or, uh, platform drop fair, but... Either way, and Cena's kind of even this thing back up. I don't think C is as heavy as Cookie is, so we haven't really seen any of the throws come out from Encina. He does not seem like he's a throw, uh, a thrower type, a grappler type player. I think if he implements a little bit more throws, that'll kind of force Megaplox to be a little bit more scared of his gameplay. But I mean, right now he's really not doing all that much. And that's going to be it for that first stock. The cookie and can is now off the table. He's going to have to take this first stock off the seal with the Cupid. He is able to do so. I believe he was able to do it last game. Or no, I think he took it with the with the cookie, but I mean, either way, he's got to get the C off the off the board. And yeah, honestly, since both of these games have almost went to time, if I'm Megaplux right now, I'm kind of camping it out. And Cena's got a lot of ground to cover if he doesn't take this stock off of the uh, off of the C. So. If I'm, if I'm him right now, Cupid doesn't have the best types of zoning. He does have some pretty good options, but, I mean, Sia can avoid them. Sia also has a reflector. He has three characters that have counters, so, I mean, if, if he wants to, he can just play this one very slow and try to, you know, take that time uh, take that time off the clock. Okay, 
gets the forward throw. What's that going to be? Great DI from him in the air dodges to make sure he did not get hit by that forward air because that could have been detrimental to that second stock of his. And it's definitely not looking too good for the boy in blue right now. And Cena, he's got to get some. He's got to get this stock off the table, or he is definitely not going to win this set. That actually might do it. Almost, but great DI from Encina. Still going to be able to live just a little bit, dropping the arrows down to make sure he can cover his landing. Okay, and the up tilt going to be enough to take the stock. Or I think that might have been down tilt. I really wasn't sure. Traded out with something, and not going to be trading out with that. That Another dash attack will be enough to take that stock off of this Cupid, and a forward air will do it as well. So Encina got to be careful trying to make it back. He's going to side B right beside the forward tilt. Uh, the forward smash, and he gets hit by the second one. Now, he's going to be on the Magician. Oh, going for a forward smash. Reed right there definitely wasn't the good option right there. Going to be able to punish that uh, that down B. That does have a lot of in lag on it. And you can see Megapox is kind of camping the best that he can. But look at this damage that he is getting direct onto him right now. And Cena's playing extremely well. For him to be down two stocks, I definitely think he's um, I definitely think he's got this one in the bag if he can take this stock off the S17. But you do not want to get any more extra credit than what you got right now because Sophia is an extremely strong character. We are all very aware of that. So if you can take this stock off the S17 right now, you might just be able to pull this one off. Oh, Megapox going for the grab and Cena calling it out, jumping over it, punishing with the down air. That's another thing. We haven't been seeing too much statues, and I believe that the reason is is because he doesn't want them to try to affect his own gameplay. And Megapox does have the ability to knock back the statues. Of course, any character does in the game, but I think what, what Encina has got to start doing is throwing those statues out just a little bit more and trying to be aware of what Megapox is going to do with the statues. Obviously, that back throw from um, that colorful sticker did get nerfed a little bit, and that's going to be it. Yeah, that one didn't get nerfed at all. But the colorful, the colorful sticker pro swing from Sophia did get nerfed a little bit, so it is a little bit harder to get those um, those combos after the back throw at higher percentages. But either way, Megapox is going to be able to take that last stock off of that Magician with the forward smash and the star helping him out, taking the set to one.